Hey, hey, what's up everyone? So, we got a little bit of stuff to talk about today and that involves some monstrous fish and some monstrous behavior. What that might be? Well, you're going to find out after the intro. Alright guys, so you always know us for having monster fish and uh, you know we got some fish in pre previously and we, we specifically told you guys that you know these fish should not be in the hobby whatsoever and there are a few on that list, you know just a, a handful, Arapaima, alligator gar, caroon sharks, those should all not be in the, the hobby. For one, alligator gar get massive. They're readily available. Same thing with uh, the arapaima. There goes a six and a half foot arapaima over there. Let me go ahead and get a little closer. I'm guessing him right now to be about 80 pounds. He's uh, you know, bit bigger around than a basketball, six and a half feet long. He is just a ridiculously big fish that nobody should in their right minds own and uh, if you don't have a setup like this you should not own them and the third one I was talking about is the Perun shark so that is the closest thing we can get to a Mekong catfish which uh, basically the Me Mekong cats are bigger versions of the Perun shark the Perun shark can get up to about six foot maybe a tad bit bit bigger but the Mekong cats can get over 600 pounds and nine feet long. Now, I know the problems that these perun sharks can, can cause, so you can only imagine what a Mekong cat can, can do if it was hungry. Now, you know, most people would say over in Asia, they're mostly ve vegetarians, and where they come from, that might be true. But what I'm talking about is if you stick them into a predator tank, you're gonna feed them prepared foods. They're going to know and behave to only eat those prepared foods. They are going to be meat eaters. You are not gonna be able to physically provide enough food to go into this aquarium to sustain a six, seven, eight, nine foot fish off of just vegetables. He has to eat something else. So if you're, you're throwing a 12, 24 inch fish in for a eight foot long cat catfish, he's gonna gobble it up like it is nothing. I sh showed you what a Perun shark could do at about two foot long. He ate my 18 inch Leparanus catfish and made a snack out of him like it was nothing. Now Leparanus are some of the fastest fresh water fish around. I would never have thought that a Perun shark could catch him. Well, he did. So that means the Perun shark is faster or B, the Perun shark's mouth is bigger and was able to catch him. Well, besides the fact, oh, look at that. Do you see what that is? There goes a chocolate pleco in the set center coral. I thought we got most of the plecos out of here. Nope, they are still hiding. So back to what I was saying, you know, Perun sharks are just a threat in the aquarium hobby. Right now we have some just over three foot long and they are on a reign of terror yet again. So now what I mean by that, you know, we have this uh, 58,000 gallon monster pond. Everyone usually lives in unison, has no problems with, with each other whatsoever. But you know, sometimes you will come out and there will just be some fish messed up overnight. And you're like, what's wrong? What happened? You know, I just fed them last night, everyone ate. There should be no reason for an attack. Well, when you're dealing with monster fish, you deal with monster fish problems. And, you know, some of those problems entail fish going on killing sprees. Well, you know, like my Goliath tiger fish, he used to go on kick to killing sprees and just overnight decide he didn't let, let like a fish and took a chunk out, out of them. And that is what ultimately led me to get rid of my tiger fish which was uh, honestly one of my bi the biggest regrets in the hobby because that guy was uh, 26, 27 inches long. He was a beast and I ultimately sold him and uh, 
he a- a- ended up dying in transport, so I'm going to put that, that one on myself. But you know what? I thought I, I was doing be- better for-, for-, for the fish, but that is all, all right. But lately, we have had a problem with our prune sharks. We told you guys in some earlier videos that nobody should own these fish in their right mind, and they've been imported like crazy. Not so much a- anymore because that they are now illegal to export, so you're not going to be able to find prune sharks readily available a- anymore. I have three in this pond. I have a short body in the 4400, and Rod has... I think six or eight, and he actually wants to try and breed the, these guys and be, be the sole distributor in the United States. Is it possible? Sure, it can be, but you know what? Rod knows the same, you know, problems that I deal with here. He he loves his monster fish, and he knows these Perun sharks all too well. Well, we came out the, the other morning, and we found out that the Perun sharks were going on a rampage. So here, let's get a little closer. Here goes big old Brutus just coming by. As you can see, that is all just a massive arapaima. My goodness. But when I talk about a rampage, I am referring to stuff like this. Who has a mouth big enough and will go after a four foot red tail? That is absolutely just insanity. And why would they, they do it? We cannot, you know, uh, come up with a reason why other than they are predator catfish and they do what they want. As you can see, the Perun shark had the whole head of this catfish in his mouth. As you, you can see, the, the round bites took a chunk off of his side there. Now, all this white stuff right, right here is missing skin and that is uh, like a fungus going over it. It's actually helping his skin heal underneath. Although it looks bad, this is actually a good sign. Now, last night I went ahead and treated this water to help him heal up a bit more. I overfed the, the Perun sharks even more than I anticipated. But if we keep on continuing on, here we go over here. Look at this guy. Same thing, the other red tailed catfish, all bit up from the Perun sharks. These things are nothing that a common hobbyist should have in their tank. These are true predator fish. Now, if you imagine this thing at six foot long with a 30 inch wide mouth, yes, it is big enough to eat a small child. It would, you know, scare me to go in there and go fishing. Like I said in my previous video, it doesn't take much force to hold a human underwater. If you're out here and nobody else is around and you're cleaning the tank and the prune shark just decides to take you swimming and you drown and die. That's what you have to deal with with monster fish. There goes a 40 inch red, red tail. Here goes probably a 46 inch red tail, but he's pro probably about 40, 50 pounds. Now, those are not the only problems we've had with the prune sharks. Look at this guy, our pride and joy, Spirata Aor. Look at that top fin. The prune sharks mutilated him. Look at his tail fin. Now, his tail fin is almost completely gone. Although the bones are still there, it will grow back, but it will take a long, long time. As you, you can see that slough on his tail starting to come off. You can see exposed skin under there. That is actually a good sign. Another reason I treated this tank last night so we can help uh, rid the uh, infected areas of the fungus. You do not want to cause more infection when a fish is already sick. Now this is a three foot long Spirata Aor. This is an Indian shovel nose. These guys are hard to keep alive and get this big. This is uh, one of two that I know of in the United States that are this big. The only one who has one larger than I is our good butt buddy Victor down in Florida. Now he knows this fish all to do well. This is an alpha predator of your tank. This catfish does not take no shit whatsoever. Excuse my language, but I had to put emphasis on that because this catfish is a bad mamajama. So he is nothing to mess with. He can stand his own against everyone in this tank. And these Perun sharks 
did that to him overnight. Now, the reason we know it is the Perun Sharks is because Jerry was out here at, at nighttime look, looking around, and he physically seen the big Perun Shark go up and biting these catfish. So what are you supposed to do when you come along a three-foot fish biting on a four-foot a four fish or another three-foot catfish trying to eat that them whole? That is absolute insanity. So you, there's really nothing you can do. What Are we going to take these fish out and put them in a smaller tank just to put them back in here and you know meet, meet their, their demise? Like what are you supposed to do in the, the, this sense? You give them a 58,000 gallon pond to li live in and whatnot, and you want to provide the best home for, for these fish, and you then have to de deal with your fish trying to eat each other. Now, it is possible that they are going through a huge growth spurt, and uh, they just need fed way, way more than you're used to feeding. So that is my first you know, solution to, to this. I'm going to feed these guys, and I'm going to target feed the Perun sharks just so they are extra full and not wanting to go after the uh, other fish. You know, so sometimes you'll be uh, looking at your tanks and you'll notice in, in like a month a fish is shot up like 10 inches or something. You know, most common with catfish, arapaima, gar, and of course the Perun sharks. These guys are some of the fastest growing fish I have come by. You know, we bought these things at li little like inch and a half Perun sharks and wi within a few months they are 10 inches long. Now of course when they get bigger they do slow down their growth rate a ton but you, you think for a three foot fish to grow up to foot for four foot you'd think oh it'd take a couple years. Not for an arapaima it would take about a year and for a per Perun shark it will take about but a year. These guys are three years old. They're about the same age as Brutus. We got them around the same time, and they are averaging a foot a year, which is absolute insanity when you think of a fish of that size. Now, they look a little small from on top of the water, but they are probably about 18 inches tall. They are thick, just big strong fish and they are honestly the alpha of this entire pond you know i said we were going to have troubles with the, the, these guys when we first got them i uh, you know try and preach to everyone but this is why i make these videos to try and you know help persuade you guys and teach you guys and learn from other people's mistakes and uh you know what don't buy the, these fish now luckily you can't not no more but you run by things like this. This Ferrata does not deserve to be swimming around like this, but I'm gonna do everything in my power to try and save our friend here. Same thing with the uh, Red Tet to Dale Cats. We got bit, the Big Bill over here. Actually, Big Bill is underneath that log. She was not touched. These were our Red Tails that we actually grew out for, for some time. So they didn't deserve to get beaten up on. But things like this does happen when you deal with monster fish. Now, another thing, you guys notice everything when it comes to the monster fish. So I'm going to go ahead and talk about something real quick before we sign off on this video. Alright, so you guys might have noticed in the last video that there was no tiger fish in this 4,400 gallon tank. So here is what happened. I did have a video queued up to share with you, you guys that we had a public aquarium reach out to, to do us and they had just lost their, you know, whatever year old uh, Vitatus tiger fish in and they had just seen that we got one of a substantial size and uh, they want, wanted to gift us or donate a substantial amount of money to the, the, the rescue. And they, in return, they wanted the Vitatis tigerfish. Now, it took a lot into me for, to give up that, that fish, but it was for the better good of the rescue. I could not turn tur down the uh, donation money that, that they were offering, although they did... Uh, wish to remain anonymous, so I was not able to release that video. 
I might be able to talk to their coordinator and be able to uh, push it out on member content or something like that. I just have to get their permission before I'm able to release that online. But you guys might remember that uh, I had to get in this tank to go ahead and clean it right before the o OCA came. So I use that same time to be able to get in there and catch the tiger fish out. And uh, yeah, it was a little hard for me, but that is why we uh, picked up s some ba babies and I'm gonna try, try my hand at a baby once more. So hope you guys enjoyed today's video. There goes that short body Peroon shark I'm talking about. So you guys can see a iridescent shark got a tiny mouth with a big body. Let's wait for this Peroon shark to come by and I will show you exactly what I'm talking about. You can see this fish that's a fraction of his size has a head as wide as his mouth. So there you have it, true beast in nature. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I will catch you in the next one. Stay fishy, my friends.